I made a smart gyroscope and accelerometer sensor that works with Home Assistant for less than $5 and I'll show you how I did it, so you can make your own. I'll also list the needed parts, I'll show how I connected them, as well as the used configuration that can be reused by anyone. And I'll make some demo home assistant automations, utilizing my new and shiny smart gyroscope and accelerometer sensor. Actually, it may not look too shiny right now, but it can be if you put it in a case. This is a smart home DIY mini project, which you can see only here, so subscribe for more similar videos. I'm going to use a BMI 160 inertial measurement unit that have a gyroscope and accelerometer sensors and it have a cost of around one dollar. I'll connect that sensor to a D1 mini board that costs below three US dollars. I'll also use four jumper wires and a micro USB cable. The total cost of this smart inertial sensor for home assistant aka gyroscope plus accelerometer project is around five dollars or even less. You can find links to all of the needed parts in the video description and if you buy something from there I'll get a small fraction of your purchase with no additional cost for you. That's because I'm an Amazon and AliExpress affiliate partner. Anyways, this is how I wired the BMI 160 sensor and the D1 Mini. I connected the VIN pin on the BMI 160 to the 3 volt pin of the D1 Mini. Then I connected the ground pin on the BMI 160 to the ground pin on the D1 Mini. After that, I connected the SCL pin on the BMI 160 to the D1 pin on the D1 Mini. And finally, I connected the SDI pin on the BMI 160 to the D2 pin on the D1 Mini. And this is the final result and it is exactly how I connected the BMI 160 to the D1 Mini ESP8266 board. So I can now upload an ESP software on it and this to become a wireless smart inertial sensor that is working with Home Assistant. Be aware that both BMI 160 sensor and the D1 Mini are coming with pin headers detached. So I had to solder these pin headers to the boards so I can use the female to female jumper wires to connect them. This is just one of the ways to connect both boards. Any other options are possible as long as you keep these connections according to the diagram. Next thing needed is a running home assistant, preferably with ESP Home dashboard add-on installed. If you don't have add-on store on your home assistant, or if you don't have Home Assistant at all, then join me in my Home Assistant webinar and you will learn everything essential about different Home Assistant installation types. The webinar is absolutely free. After the wiring, I opened the ESP Home dashboard add-on in my Home Assistant, I created a new device, I entered the name and my Wi-Fi credentials. I selected ESP8266 as device type here because D1 Mini is such a bore. Then I skipped the installation process for a moment and instead I edited the new device configuration where I added the following lines. You can get the full working code from the link in the video description or from my written article. In few words, I'm adding an I2C section where wiring of the board is described. I'm also adding a web server so I can open the web interface of the sensor in my browser and in that web interface I will be able to see the sensor readings even without Home Assistant. The web server part is optional and you can comment it out if you don't need it. The final thing in the code and a must have one is the sensor section, which is just like the one found in the ESP Home website documentation. And the most important thing here that may need some change is the address. The default address is 68, but for my BMI 160 sensor this address didn't work and I had to change it to 69. So if your sensor is not showing any values after ESP Home uploading, try to change the address here. If you bought the BMI 160 sensor from my links in the video description, then start with 69 address first and only if it doesn't work then change the address to the default one which is 68 and upload the ESP Home again. I saved the changes, then I connected the D1 Mini with the attached BMI 160 sensor to the one of the USB ports of the device where Home Assistant and ESP Home are running. I hit install and I selected this third option 
then I selected the port on which the sensor is connected and ESP Home installation process begins. After several minutes I saw these lines and I tried to open the web interface of the device and there I saw the gyroscope and accelerometer readings that are updating life while I'm moving the sensor. All of that is a very good sign, don't you think? The next option I'll think is a 3D printed case for our newly created DIY Smart Giro plus accelerometer smart sensor, so the project to look finished. I used this 3D printed model and I will link it in the video description, but there are more options also listed there. And here comes the fun part, adding our DIY inertial sensor in Home Assistant. While I'm doing this, I just want to quickly admit that smart home technology can be overwhelming with all the different terms and acronyms out there. That's why I've created a smart home glossary to help you better understand the smart home terminology. My glossary is absolutely free, it is coming as one big PDF file and you can instantly download it from my website. The link can be found on the screen and in the video description. Now. Back to the action. I will make a home assistant automation now, but do you know that inertial measurement sensors such as BMI 160 that we have are also used in mobile phones and tablets, smartwatches, fitness devices, game controllers, toys, drones and more. By using them it is possible to recognize gestures like shaking or tapping, free fall events and when the sensor simply is not moving. Most if not all of these gestures can be recognized by using home assistant automations and our cheap DIY gyroscope and accelerometer sensor. I will only scratch the surface with my demo home assistant automation here but you can dive deep and make anything you wish with this setup. This is my demo automation. I have four triggers with different IDs and four different actions. You can get the complete code of this home automation, home assistant automation from the video description. You can find the link there. And now if I want to test it, I'll get my smart gyro and accelerometer sensor. And if I turn it right, the lights is turned on. If I turn it left, the right, the light is turned off. If I turn it up, it will become blue. If I turn it down, it will become red. Here is the same thing, but faster. Right, white, up, blue, down, red, left, off. Great, it is working perfectly. To make the sensor even better, it is possible a battery shield for the D1 Mini to be added along with a compatible lithium battery. This will make our inertial sensor for home assistant battery powered and completely wireless. But that is entirely nice to have option and it is a topic for another video. If you want to see such thing, let me know somehow, leave a like on this video and even better, type it in the comments and maybe I will make part 2 where I'll add a battery to that sensor. Meanwhile, if you manage to build your own sensor thanks to this video, make sure to drop a comment with the text hashtag Giro owned so we can celebrate your success together. And don't forget to check out my smart DIY sensors playlist for more awesome projects like this one. Thanks for watching, I'm Kiryu and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <sighs>